Let's just talk about the shoes. Uh, I will not make fun of John Morant or the Grizzlies because win or lose is all part of the game, right? Has this shoe become the best Nike basketball shoe right now? Nah, I'm fine with my PG6 or LeBron 20s. Hi there, hope you're having a good day. Welcome back to another video. Today we got Ja Morant's first signature shoe with Nike. Retail price is set at 110 US dollars. Not bad, uh, but please do not pay resale for a shoe like this. Not worth it, and eventually this will be widely available, so you can easily get yourself a pair. Uh, some marketing gimmick, low stock, who knows. But demand is high. Uh, it's a pretty popular shoe, and we should be seeing a lot more colorways dropping soon. How do you guys think these look, by the way? Comment down a rating out of 10. I personally think it's very plain and simple. Not necessarily a bad thing. Uh, it looks more like a generic Nike SB than a modern performance hoop shoe made for an aggressive playing style like Jazz. Lots to talk about with how these do on the court. As always, we'll get right into some details. I really like this box that they come in. It's a blue one with a big logo on top. You have John Moran printed on there too, and 12 for his jersey number on the side. This is a low top shoe. This color right here is called Family Trivia, with a bunch of trivia questions written on the upper in different colors. It's mainly a standard mesh upper. The netting is pretty thin, and the Nike swoosh is a soft rubber that wraps all the way around over the heel. Below that, the foam is partly caged by the rubber also. It does have a four foot zoom unit, and there's also a leather panel up front. A toe box is mesh. In hand, the materials feel a little bit cheap. Uh, well, this shoe, once you take it out of the box, there's not much of a premium feeling to it. But given the price tag, it's all within our expectations. Padding is pretty nice. They call it a raised cushion foam collar. The ankle area does feel secure enough inside. Uh, just like the Tatum 1 and uh, many other shoes these days, the insoles are kind of lame. On uh, my pair, it was even popping up, so I finally tried the Move insoles. Uh, let me tell you, their game day insoles are actually such a game changer uh, on shoes like this. So I gotta appreciate those who uh, suggested me to try these, because so far they've been amazing and definitely elevated my experience playing in these. Looking at the also, it's more of an irregular traction pattern with multi-directional lines. A Ja logo, uh, simple but functional. I would say that the rubber does feel like it'll last pretty well if you're thinking about using these outdoors, but I've yet to play in these outside. Otherwise, the upper is fairly flexible, not too soft, and uh, weight is on the lighter side for sure. I have 390 grams for my size 10 and a half pair. Lighter than the KDs, Lucas, LeBrons, and PGs. As to how the Nike Ja 1 performs, uh, cushioning is right around what you'd expect out of a shoe at this price range. No crazy stacked up zoom air setup or new technology, but a decent amount of heel compression. And responsiveness is not bad either. I wouldn't consider them a very bouncy shoe. Um, given Ja's athleticism, maybe he simply doesn't need it. There's also not that much of a curve shape on the outsole. So transition is fine. Uh, it goes smoothly, but not super impressive. Now the traction is actually very good. The rubber grips the floor really well. It's very squeaky in the indoor gym. Uh, getting to a hard stop, turning and pivoting, you should have no problems. Dust pickup is also not an issue. I was good to go on both clean and dusty courts. This rubber also does feel like a sturdy one, but do I plan on using these outdoors right away? Nah, I'm fine indoors for now. With the fit, these are true to size. So whatever size you normally wear in Nike sneakers, you can safely go ahead with that. Uh, from like online images and the shape itself, I thought this has a very wide base, but in reality, not so much. It's more like average width. And the way the collar area is padded, it does push against your ankle quite a bit, which is good and adds to the security, but going true to size is a little bit snug and really not as spacious as I thought it would be. I've tried on going half size up, uh, but true to size is the best option for most people, I feel like. Uh, given the mesh upper, breathability is not bad. They're pretty light on feet. Uh, from my experience, it's a decent lockdown too. I'll put it this way. This shoe gives you a little bit of everything. A nice core feel. It meets the standard across the board. But there's also nothing spectacular that makes it really special in a certain area, uh, if that makes sense. Overall, I do think the Jawan is a really solid performer. Great traction, decent comfort, 
and a secure fit. Subjectively speaking, at 110 bucks, it's got good value for its performance. You also get the first signature shoe of a rising NBA star. But again, just don't pay resale prices. Uh, with more colorways releasing, I really don't see a point to rush it uh, more than retail. Let me know how you feel about the Jia down in the comments. Uh, please feel free to share your experiences too if you've also started playing in these. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.